Good evening, aspirants. Welcome to Daily News Analysis brought to you by Shankar Ayes Academy. Today's date is 31st August 2024. Displayed here are the list of topics that we are going to discuss today. Today, we are going to discuss three important articles from the newspaper. The first article is about India's second nuclear submarine. India has recently commissioned the second nuclear submarine for Navy, which is named as INS Arihat. And we are going to discuss about this submarine in this article. The second article is about cyber security threats. So, what are the cyber security threats in India and what are the measures taken? can be government to curb cyber security fraud so this is what we are going to discuss in the second article the third article is about core sectors what are the trends in core sectors how it has grown in the recent years and what are the measures taken by government regarding core sectors so this is what we are going to discuss in the third article and finally we have prelims practice question discussion so this is what we are going to discuss in this video now let us get into the discussion before entering our discussion i have two important announcement first is regarding the prelims test series 2025 shankar ayes academy pre storming test series for UPSC 2025 prelims is going to start on 6th September. So there will be 48 tests. Interested aspirants can enroll in this test series and the link for this is given in the description below. You can check it. The second announcement is regarding All India UPSC Mains Open Mock Test by Shankar Ayes Academy. The link for this mock test is given in the description below. Interested aspirants can check it. Now let us get into the discussion. Okay guys, look at the first article. This is about India's second nuclear submarine which is INS Arihat. This INS Arihat was recently commissioned in 2024 at Vishakhapatinam. So, this article discuss about the importance of INS Arihat and other submarines of India. So, we shall discuss about India's nuclear powered submarines and diesel electric submarines. So, in this article, we are going to discuss about India's submarines. INS Arihat. This is India's first nuclear powered submarine. It was commissioned in 2016. It is armed with K-15 missiles which are submarine launched ballistic missiles. So, INS Arihant is armed with K-15 missiles. These missiles have a range of over 700 km. And INS Arihant is powered by pressurized light water nuclear reactor. So, with the commissioning of INS Arihant and INS Arihat, India has entered into a allied group of countries which have nuclear triad. Here, nuclear triad means the ability of a country to launch nuclear missiles from three platforms that is air, land and sea. So, India has joined the group of countries like United States, Russia, China and France as a country with the capability of nuclear triad. Now, talking about INS Arihat, it was commissioned this year in 2024 in Vishakhapatinam. It is more technologically advanced compared to INS Arihant. It also has higher payload compared to INS Arihant. It is powered by 83 megawatt nuclear reactor which is a light water pressurized nuclear reactor and it is armed with K-15 missiles same as INS Arihant. So, these K-15 missiles are submarine launched ballistic missile. Now, let us see the diesel electric submarines of India. See, submarines in India are classified into two types. One is powered by diesel electric submarines and other is nuclear powered submarines. In diesel electric submarines, we have three classes. Sindhugosh class, Shishumar class and Kalwari class. This Sindhugosh class was a technology transfer from Russia and this Shishumar class was a technology transfer from France. And this Kalwari class is indigenously developed submarines under Project 75. In Sindhugosh class submarine, we have seven types of submarines presently commissioned in India and in Shishumar class, we have four submarines and in Kalwari class, we have six diesel electric submarines. So, these submarines are powered by diesel and electricity and we have separate class of submarines which are nuclear powered submarine. Under nuclear powered submarine, we have two subtypes that is nuclear ballistic submarine and nuclear powered attack submarine. Currently, India has commissioned INS Arihant and INS Arihat as nuclear ballistic missile submarines. We had INS Chakra 2 as nuclear powered attack submarine and it was decommissioned in 2021. It is bought from Russia and presently it was now decommissioned. Now we are going to get another nuclear powered attack submarine that is INS Chakra in 2025 that is next year. So, presently we do not have nuclear powered attack submarine. So, this is about the basics of submarines in Indian Navy. With this, let us approach a prelims question. Look at this prelims question. Which of the following statements regarding INS Arihant and INS Arihat are correct? INS Arihant is India's first indigenously developed nuclear powered submarine while INS Arihat is a follow on class of Arihant with improved capabilities. Yes, this statement is correct. Both INS Arihant and INS Arihat are designed to carry and launch ballistic missiles. Yes, this statement is also correct. We have seen in the discussion, both have ability to carry submarine launched ballistic missiles, SLBM. So, this statement is correct. INS Arihat has larger payload capacity compared to INS Arihant. Yes, this statement is also correct because INS Arihat is more technologically advanced than INS Arihant. So, the correct answer for this question is option D. All three statements are correct. With this, let us conclude this discussion and move to the next news article. Now, look at this article. It talks about the recent findings in the growth of core sectors. In India, we have eight key industries 
which are called as core sectors. The core sectors have seen an increase of 6.6% growth in last month. Out of this, electricity generation has increased growth of 7% and natural gas production has a decrease in growth. So, in this discussion, we are going to see the basics of the 8 core industries and what are their recent trends and government initiatives regarding these core sectors. Now look at this table. These 8 key industries form the core sectors in India. Coal, crude oil, natural gas, refinery products, fertilizers, steel, cement and electricity. So these key 8 industries form the core sector. The growth in these 8 key industries determine the India's economic health and infrastructure development. Now let us see the findings of report which is mentioned in the news article. The refinery products have increased in production of 6.6%, the fertilizers have increased production of 5.3% and the steel sector have shown growth of 7.2%. So these 3 sectors have increased trend of growth. If you look at cement production, coal and crude oil, they have declined in growth. So, the cement production has declined 7% in growth and the coal has slowed down to 6.8% and the crude oil production has declined by 2.9%. So, these three industries have declined in growth. So, this is the current state of 8 key industries in core sector. Now, what is the significance of this core sector? The growth in core sectors and the 8 key industries reflects India's economic health and infrastructure development. So, the growth in these sectors have multiplier effect which means it impacts the entire economy. The growth in this sector is measured by increase in output or decrease in output which is measured annually or monthly by using the weights in ICI. Here ICI means index of core industries. So this is very important for formulating the infrastructure development and the other economic policies and this index of core industries is used by RBI and other government ministries. So the index of core industries forms 40% in index of industrial production. So, this index of industrial production measures the economic health of whole country and it is released by Central Statistical Organization. Now, let us see about the index of 8 core industries. See, this index is released by Department of Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, DPIIT. And this index has 8 components. As we have seen already, the 8 core industries or key industries form the components of this ICI. But the weightage for these industries differ. Petroleum refinery products has highest weightage followed by electricity, then steel and natural gas, cement and fertilizers have lowest weightage. So, this is about the weightage. The base year for this ICI calculation is 2011 to 12. The weightage of these industries are calculated by Office of Economic Advisor and he functions under Department of Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. So, the weightage for each industry is calculated by Office of Economic Advisor who functions under DPIIT. So, the index is released by DPIIT. So, this is about ICI. Now, look at this table. These are important government initiatives regarding the core sectors. So, take a look at it. For this, let us conclude the discussion. Let us discuss about a previous year prelims question regarding this stuff. In the index of 8 core industries, which one of the following is given the highest weight? It was asked in 2015 prelims. The correct answer is option B. Electricity generation is given the highest weightage in index of 8 core industries. For this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next topic. Now, look at this article. Prime Minister Modi has emphasized the financial sector regulator to do more for curbing the cyber security frauds and increase the digital literacy. So, in this context, let us see the status of cyber security in India and important initiatives taken by government to increase the financial literacy. Now, looking at the status of cyber security in India, India ranks third in cyber security breaches globally. 30 percentage of Indian companies have experienced cyber attacks in 2022. This is according to the report from Lok Sabha. There were 1.1 million cyber security cases in 2023 and more than 7000 crore were lost in cyber security breaches last year. So, this is the status of cyber security in India. Now, what are the government initiatives regarding cyber security? First is Digital Personal Data Protection Act, Cyber Security Strategy of 2020. Indian Computer Emergency Response Team was created in this regard, which is called CERTIN. So, these are some of the initiatives regarding cyber security by Indian government. Now, let us see about Digital Personal Data Protection Act. This act was introduced in 2022 and it replaced IT Act of 2000. It established establishes data production authority. This act also defines what is personal data and it tries to protect the sensible personal data of individuals and thereby improving the digital economy of the country. So, this is the aim of implementing this personal data protection act. It also mandates data localization and cross-border transfer rules. It imposes penalties for non-compliance. It imposes penalties for non-compliance and the penalties can be imposed up to 500 crore. 
it also provides a right to data principles here the data principles means the individuals who are enjoying the digital privacy so basically this digital data protection act aims to improve the digital economy and also balances it with digital privacy now what are the other technological developments in financial sector the first one is upa upa has transformed the digital payments of india and has allowed for real time digital interbank transactions then immediate payment service which allows for 24 bar 7 payments between banks this aadhar enabled payment system has facilitated the transactions in rural areas by linking the bank accounts with aadhar the national payments corporation of india which has introduced upa 2.0 with new features like overdraft facilities and other invoice based statements and rbi's regulatory sandbox rbi's regulatory sandbox have provided a innovative platform for fintech companies to operate without any cyber security issues so these are some of the technological advancement in this regard now let us discuss a prelims question regarding this topic in india under cyber insurance for individuals which of the following benefits are generally covered look at the first statement cost of restoration of computer system in case of malware disrupting access to one's computer yes this cost of restoration is provided so this statement is correct cost of new computer if some miscreant willfully damages it if proved so no this cost is not provided so this is not covered under cyber insurance so this statement is wrong cost of hiring a specialized consultant to minimize the loss in case of cyber extortion yes this cost is covered under cyber insurance cost of defense in court of law if any third party files a suit yes this cost is also covered under cyber insurance in india so option 1 3 4 are correct the correct answer is option b with this we have come to the end of the discussion if you like the video please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to shankara academy youtube channel thank you for watching